Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube family? We are back. This is Sam Leggett here, and I'm here with Lucas. We are covering another film for Fantastic Fest 2020. Um, the name of this film is The Boy Behind the Door. I didn't have any kind of preconceived notions about this movie. I didn't even watch the trailer. <laughs> I literally just went off of, uh, I'm going to show you guys now, this image right here. That's all I had to go on. And I thought that the image looked very intriguing. I didn't understand if it was a ghost story. I really had no idea what it was. And um, to be honest with you guys, it really did exceed whatever expectations I did have. And it really was a really fun, well, I'm sorry, not fun, <laughs> engaging ride. <laughs> it wasn't fun at all, <laughs> but it was oh, a like very week. well crafted engaging ride i guess that's this the best was way to put it this was extremely fun i don't know what you're talking about buddy Ugh. my 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 love for horror movies made this movie extremely fun but like sam all i saw was the picture i didn't see the trailer until after i saw the movie because i wanted mm. to see like how are they positioning this movie in the trailer and they clearly yeah. position it as a horror movie in the trailer so i'm kind of happy i didn't see the trailer beforehand but yeah. I only wanted to see this movie because of uh, Lonnie Chavis, which is mm. one of the 12 year olds in the film, because he's in This Is Us. And This Is Us is one of my favorite shows. And I said, uh, hey, it's, a, it's the little guy from This Is Us. I said, I want to check this out. And man, man, this this movie is, this is <laughs> hostile. No, it's it it's very close to being the best horror movie I've seen this year. It's 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 right on par with like uh Spiral which I saw of recently like it's this is a really good independent horror movie. Very good. Like the quality of this and when Lucas was, I was having a conversation afterwards with Lucas and like I think from my understanding I'm not sure by the time you see this review whether or not the distribution will change. But right now, this is just a strictly independent film. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell it because not the all. camera angles, the lighting, the score, um, allowing both uh, the characters, Kevin and Bobby, to really be kids in this yes. scenario. Like, I was, I was talking to Lucas and Net initially, and I was kind of like watching. I was like, this is a worse case scenario <laughs> and it's one of those situations where i was like the character bobby one of the most engaging things about him as a character and i, I haven't seen this as us but he he showed out for me um personally with his you know impressionable performance in just the moment that he got out of the car and he was starting to run and it did this amazing scene. I got to talk about the, the cinematography and the iconography of certain scenes that they use where he was kind of like picturing his friend looking out at the wave and then picturing him back, like closed in, like in the dark and back there. And he just couldn't let it go. And he decided as young as he is to go back in there for his friend. And from that point, that's where the movie just kind of just goes. But I just loved so many different moments like that um, throughout this film that I was kind of like, what am I watching? Like, it, it really felt like one of the better thrillers I've seen in a good, what, two years at least. Um, easily my favorite thriller this year. Um, I don't even know if I can classify as a thriller, though, because oh, no, it it's does horror. have horror elements. No, no, yeah. it's, it, it, is, it is. They categorize this as a horror thriller. So it's in the vein. I'm, I, as Sam was about to watch it, I think, and I was already into watching it, and I told him it reminds me of Don't Breathe. In mm -hmm. a sense, it grabs you, and once it grabs you, it just doesn't let go of you. And nah, you you, you feel like you're in peril just like the kids are in peril the entire movie. It's one of those like gut punches that you get, and as he said, for a horror thriller, which I know a lot of people think they're the same, they are not the same. And horror thrillers are very rare because it's hard to execute them. You can even yeah. go, you can either go horror or you can go thriller. But when you try to do both, again, the last one I saw executed well was Don't Breathe. 
And this is right on par with it, which is more surprising because this is an independent film. I think that needs yeah. to be said more than anything else. This is an independent film by, from what I have been able to read up on this stuff, by a duo director that this is their first time directing a movie. Yeah. It's not the first thing they've written, but I think this is the first thing they've directed. And that's even more amazing, especially when your direct when your debut is with children. Yeah. And knowing all the restrictions you have when you work with children <laughs> and to Bro. still pull off this movie. I couldn't have been one of their parents. I'd have stopped the movie. I'd like, no, no, it's too yeah. much. Yeah. Too much going yeah. on here. Yeah, because the moment where I, I, I one at one point I was kind of like, if I was Bobby, there's no telling what is actually happening to his friend. Mm -hmm. And they did like a lot of these shots like this where you kind of get like a small little blip of what might be going on. But, but I didn't know whether or not that was his imagination or if it was like. His friend was already dead. Like we, we the, the whole entire movie, you don't know what's really going on until a certain kind of moment. And that, that same moment, there's also an interesting reveal. There's a lot of certain things that kind of happen that is an open door kind of situation. I love that about this. But again, um, when I was talking to Lucas and he kind of mentioned that, I was kind of like thinking the panic room, because one of the things I loved about panic room is the close-ups, the camera angles and Everything that happens throughout the movie, like a panic room, you never know where it's going to actually go. Um, I was like, what if, you know, nobody makes out of this? Because <laughs> I really had no idea going out through the whole entire movie, like what was really going to happen. And, and honestly, um, there was a scene. Let me see if I can pick it up. Yep. There it is right there. This scene right here. I feel like. I didn't know. I was like, this is it. Like, I was like, I, I had no clue where it was going from this. Because it up until that point, you know, the character Bobby was going through hell in a handbag. Like, he was trying to do everything he could to get attention, to get help. And at this point, he was at a point of desperation. Um, and then this is also an amazing reveal as well. Um, I do want to talk to you know Lucas about that later offline, but I am not spoiling this. This is one yeah, of these films you really you gotta, gotta just watch. watch. Yeah, you, you just gotta, gotta watch it. it. The the most that you need to know is the setup, and the setup is fine to know because <laughs> amazingly, <laughs> on the page of the film they will tell you the setup of the movie of two kids being kidnapped, and then everything else that happens. So that's what makes it the worst case scenario, because. What they're being kidnapped again. If if you if you know anything about <laughs> stories about children being kidnapped, you kind of know what path that will lead them down. Yeah. But then this movie just puts you directly in the place of Bobby, and yeah. that's what gets you. And Sam said, like you, you 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 don't know if his friend is alive because he doesn't know if his friend is alive. Exactly. And they exactly. keep you intrigued that way and keep you stuck in that way, and it. It 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 grabbed it just man this movie just grabs you. This is for two 12 year olds to pull off this performance is amazing. Seriously. Amazing. So serious. Both of them are great in this movie. Yeah. And the music, um, um just just to to have the the gall to make a horror movie and to make your leads two children. For a movie that is not for children, we have horror movies that are for kids. They like they nice and all this other. This is a horror movie that stars two children that are not for children to see, ever. Yeah, like it. And and for them to nail these performances is just again great. That's the that's the best way I could put it. Is it's great. Yeah, I mean, it's weird to say that this is a gem. I, yes. I mean, I, dare I say this is a this is one of those situations where you go to a film festival and you're like, "Wow, that was amazing!" I think that happened to me last year when I looked at um, a portrait of a lady on fire. Like, I kind of was like hit the middle of the middle Middleburg, Virginia, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" I was overcome with emotion, 
And this film, just out of the different things I've seen this year, this one was that gem. Uh, another thing I wanted to also harp on was the score and the tone. Yes. Um, the score, bro. It. If I was in the movie theater, I kind of would probably be like this. Yeah, with this like, booming up and like. <laughs> hey, look, look! I had this on my sound system, so I had it just surrounding me. Because at, at first, at the beginning of the movie, I'm like, okay, let's see what it is. And then I had to restart the movie. I'm like, wait a minute. I need to experience this sound in in its fullness to really, like, grab me even more. And, man, like, again, I don't know how they managed to pull this off. I am still confused how they managed to pull this movie off with the shots, yeah. with the score. For this to be an independent film, it makes no sense. Yeah, and I mean, I think that so uh, David Carbonier, um, yep. who's one of the co, he he's done a lot of written stuff, but mm -hmm. Justin Powell, he's in uh, he's an editorial department, and so he edits. He's edited a lot of different films like La La Land, Hunger Games, Nerve. So he probably has had certain experiences, but this is unheard of. <laughs> like yeah. to be quite mm -hmm. honest with you, like. I know we're kind of selling this to you guys, but it is merited. When you, you watch the film, the first, what, five minutes? You're going to be the, all messed up. By that the point. very first shot is great. The shot of uh, Kevin just laying on the beach. That's an amazing shot to pull oh, off to yeah. be your first shot of how you open up the movie because at that moment, when we see the children, we're capturing them in all their innocence right there. And yeah. that's that's a great way to start the movie. And you got to hold on to that image for the entire movie entire as you're movie. watching them go through mm -hmm. hell everywhere else. That's, again, for first-time directors, that's a, that's an amazing thing to pull off. I, I've seen, like, directors who have done 20 40 movies not be able to do the things that they've been in this movie yeah and another thing is that the fact that this movie was taking place mainly through a house sometimes through woods the movie itself was only like what like an hour and 38 minutes something hour, like that not, not sure about an hour just not about an hour and 30 30 32 minutes maybe max but like, it, it's not a long movie but it doesn't feel like that it doesn't feel oh. like it's a short movie. It doesn't, it, throughout most of the different transitional moments, you're just trying to make sure that Bobby or Kevin are even still alive. Hey. And like in this scene right here, I kind of in my head, I was like, what if there's more people in this house? What That's, if there's man. like, what, what, what do we know? about all of this, you know what I mean? And, and we're not revealing anything to you guys, but those are just questions that you're gonna be having throughout this excursion, dealing with this as kids. And now, I, I, even to my to my dismay, I was talking to, to Lucas after he saw it, and I was like, man, why did this kid do this? Why did he, and Lucas said to me, he's a kid. That would be how a kid reacts. But to be fair, they did everything possible to try to survive through mm -hmm. these different circumstances. And nobody comes unscathed. And this is, I, what would this be rated, bro? Oh, this is R. That's no, Are you sure? They, oh, 100% sure this is an R-rated movie. There's no doubt about it. You are, without going into details, it's certain scenes in this movie that oh yeah yeah this yeah. is a yeah the this third isn't, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is definitely an r-rated movie it's again it just transports you from the moment it starts again it starts with their innocence and then it starts with what happens to them and at yeah. that point we we're at the point of view at that point of bobby the entire rest of the film just about we're at his yeah. point of view so it feel when it feels like it's gaps along the way, it's not a gap, it's just that he doesn't know, so the audience doesn't know. Yeah. Or when as Sam says it's only an hour and 30 and it feels longer, the reason it feels longer is because if he's in that situation, it would feel like a very long period of time that he's having exactly. to deal with all of this. 
and they managed to pull that off in the film and get you trapped in it with him. And so while I was only an hour and a half, at times I felt like, man, this movie's gone over two hours. Like, I need <laughs> y'all to let me go so I can, like, relax or something here. Like, <laughs> No, that's real. That's so real. So I think that the story in and of itself is, is kind of simplistic, but it's not. Um, they're, they're, matter of fact, how do I put this without saying anything? I don't even understand the depths of their friendship, to be quite honest with you. There are certain things about their foundations as friends that you just don't even know. You really don't actually know. And I love that about this film. Yeah. Because, you know, normally you kind of have like maybe exposition or a like a flashback story. here yeah. or there. Nothing. And like, you know, nothing. Matter of fact, only you get, based on their performances. And you get one you word. Get. You get one word at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. When they're laying on the beach and he says, you're my best friend and I'll never leave you. That's yeah. it. You get yeah. nothing else. And the whole yeah. rest of the film is them proving why that why them saying that makes so much sense. Yeah. Because I, as a, look, as a parent, one, I would have wished my kid did what Bobby was about to do at the beginning of the film. But, <laughs> 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 like, it, but as the parent of another kid, I would probably want him to do what happens in the movie. Like, it's, it's such a hard thing to go through with these kids in this movie. And, the feelings that you get when they're in danger and some of the things that happen to them in this oh film. Oh my gosh. It bro. is it is heartbreaking because again, this is every parent's worst nightmare. It is. That your kids yeah. are somewhere and then your kids go missing. Yeah. And what could possibly be happening to them while they're missing? Yeah. And this movie plays that perfectly to a hearty of what could happen. And yeah, everything would evolve. And we can't even mention the rest of the cast. We can't even tell you if it is the rest of the cast. We can't tell you nothing. We can't. We really can't. I, and I know, again, I, I know I hate at times being vague, but this is a situation where it's needed. You gotta, you gotta you experience gotta, this for yourself. I just need yourself. everybody to go check this movie out. This Please. is a movie. This is a <laughs> movie. Worth, and again, I don't, there's no information on distribution for this movie right now. At all, it was just at the Fantastic Fest. It was its <laughs> premiere was at this fest, and I'm assuming within the next couple of days they'll release information about distribution, or somebody will be calling them that sees this film and says, "Hey, we need to lock uh, this film up." But right now, there's really it's kind of weird because we're hyping up a film that I don't know how you can see yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, to be fair, that, I mean, what, that, that's happened over the years and then it builds into something else. I think, what was it? Um, Room was that situation and but a couple normally, others. But normally for that, like, we know an end game to it. Like, we know yeah, like, yeah. when the film is going to get distribution. This one is, I know, all I can tell you is I know someone is going to snatch <laughs> it up. I know if I had a couple of million laying around, I Bruh. would snatch it up. Bro, in, a you ain't even in a heartbeat, this movie is it, it's going to uh, make uh, Lonnie Chavis it's going to put him on the map more than he has another film coming out with uh, Harpo Films called The Waterman and mm. I think this one will be, and that played at TIFF but I think this one will put him more on the map as someone to look out for as he gets older Cause yeah. this is a, this is a heck of a heck of a performance, like a yeah. heck of a performance here. And even the the other actor that plays the role with Kevin Ezra Dewey, this is his, yeah. technically his first role, yeah, like major role. And so <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to gush too much more. Um, oh, I could now. I could I could tell you everything about this movie and how much you need to see it. But you know what? We can just go to our scores of what we believe this movie is, Sam. I have I'll let you score. go first this time. I'll let you go first this so, time. Um, <laughs> I am a firm believer that horror movies are not judged by like other movies. So, again, 
Like I think we did Girl yesterday, and I said thrillers have a scale, horror movies have the same scale. On a scale of one to <laughs> ten for this movie, I had this movie at a nine and a half out of ten. Mm. And the only reason it's a half is something I can't talk to you all about till you see the movie. But <laughs> it's a nine and a half out of ten for me. This is I, I at this point I'm going to crown it. This is the best horror movie of 2020. There's not been a horror movie better in 2020 than this movie. Did Invisible Man come out this year? Or was it last year? Oh, it did. And I'm counting Invisible Man, too. An mm. Invisible Man is not better than this movie. Mm. It is not. I was going to say way, that, but I was like, I was curious what you were going to say. Okay. <laughs> All yeah, right. Invisible Man is not as good. And that's, an, uh, I hate to interrupt Sam again, but that's another movie that's supposed to grab huh. you. And yet this movie grabs you more. More. And yep. just like, <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah, like, yeah, this is the best horror movie of 2020. Yeah, I, I mean, I can tell you guys, it's it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, and I don't normally do that necessarily with thrillers. Thrillers are immersive to me. Um, the better they can kind of convey emotion and grab me in personally, mm -hmm. the more I kind of like cater to it and want to watch it again. As messed up <laughs> as this movie is, I would watch this again in a heartbeat. So serious, like just off of the performances alone, the editing mm -hmm. alone, the tone, the score, like the methodology behind some of the the shots. Um, there was maybe some nitpicky things that kind of happened and transpired around the third act. Um, yeah. That yeah. I, I don't want to, you know, without talk talking about, about it. yeah. But I can excuse all that because honestly. This this was amazing. I, I'll give you one thing. This is not a spoiler. There's a moment <laughs> where, you know, Bobby gets to talk to Kevin. And, like, Bobby's like, yo, I think I'm going to go and do this. And, like, Kevin's like, you don't even know how to do this. And yeah, I was yeah. kind of like, <laughs> as, as kids, I was like, low key, I was like, yo, no, Bobby, go do it. But... It's the reality of the situation hey, happens. Man. And normally in movies, <laughs> they try to like dramatify it and like make it like these kids are like super ageist and it can do everything. Well, let's just say Bobby couldn't do it. And that is why I love this movie because they go in the realm of reality versus fiction hey, and most the of the most, time. That's the and most that. important part. I love that. Again, again I, I, I'm going to give a tad bit of something else too because I found that funny as heck when he tried to drive that car and he had the <laughs> slightest idea what he was doing. It's another scene of the movie where uh, and I, I can fully explain this because it's it's, a, it's not really a spoiler, it's just a funny moment where Kevin finds uh, Bobby finds a, a old rotary phone and he tells Kevin this and he says hey, Kevin's like hey, my grandma has one of those. He said how does this work? <laughs> And he said, hey, um, get, it should be a cord that looks like an internet cord. Do you know how old I felt when I realized he had to explain oh, what a phone cord looked like compared to what an what a ethernet cord looks like? Dude, Bruh. that's that's the quintessential <laughs> of letting you know these are children. They kids. don't know they are how kids. everything is supposed to work, especially things that we would normally look back on and be like, how you don't know that information? Why don't you, yeah. why aren't you able to do this? And yeah. then it transports us back to because they're 12. Why would they yeah. know this stuff? Yeah. And, and I, this is one last thing, and I promise we're going to stop. <laughs> there's never a movie, there's never a point in this movie that the kids, how do I say it? Their intent is not to harm other people, they never. still try to protect themselves as much as they possibly can. But there were moments that I was like, bro, I would have went swinging on somebody. Hey, and like the kids just like, no, I'm dipping, I'm running, you know, I'm protecting my friend, I'm doing whatever. And, you know, I love that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A kid would do that. A kid wouldn't go and harp on, well, I need to go and do this to make sure nobody does this to me. Like, incapacitate like, no. people. Kids don't incapacitate yeah. people. <laughs> Adults do. Kids only worry about getting away from situations, and that's what they do in this whole film is getting yeah. away from a situation. Yeah, and I love that. 
I love that. Anyway, so you got our review numbers. Um, thank mm. you, <laughs> fan. Fantastic Fest for this oh, uh, gem. Maybe Alamo on Demand. Alamo on Demand. That's where this movie, I think, is available after today. It's on Alamo on Demand. I believe they moved all the films from the film festival. This girl, anything that premiered, I think mm -hmm. is available for rent, purchase or rent. I think rent is like $3.99 and maybe $6.99 for like a in app purchase or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. So if you all have never heard of Alamo on Demand, it is a way for you to see certain films that will go to theaters on demand in the comfort of your own home. I think this one is showing on demand or Alamo on demand. I if I can buy this movie, I will buy, and I don't buy movies, but if I can buy a movie, I'm going to buy this movie. <laughs> I'm definitely going to rent this movie because I need other people to see it. My goal exactly. is to get as many I people agree. As I completely agree. To see this movie. I don't care how much it costs me, I'm going to get people to see this movie. <laughs> I'm going to do the exact same. Um, I don't know if I'm going to let my wife see this because, you know, nope. she'd she be like having worst case scenarios <laughs> in her head. But. <laughs> I implore you guys, please support this film. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I think you're going to have an immersive ride. It is heartbreaking at times. It is hard to watch at times. But the performances and the execution behind this film is everything that I've seen, honestly, in, in, in quite a while when it comes to a thriller or a horror film, personally. Anyway, we're gone. <laughs> I promise you we're going to go. Um, <laughs> If you want us to do a spoiler review on this later on, let us know. We'll we'll more than willing to do that. Hey, I would Just let love us know. to do one, but I need way more people to see this movie first. Great. I refuse to steal <laughs> the joy and the horror and the terror out of this movie from other yeah. people. Yeah. Completely agree. All right, guys, we're gonna go. <laughs> Peace, guys. <laughs>